Hello, this is Kevin at Keysight. I'm an applications engineer for scopes and other digital test instruments. Today, I'm going to give you a basic walkthrough of the EasyJIT software package. Um, as with any uh, time you go to start a fresh setup, the default setup is always a good thing. So we can easily do that from the drop down or from the hard key. Just hit default setup there. And so I've got some uh, one gigabit per second PRBS data coming into channels one and three on my oscilloscope. I'm going to turn on channel three. And I'm going to do an auto scale. But one thing I like to do with the auto scale is have it only do display channels and overlay the waveforms. If you squish up the waveforms, you're throwing away signal to noise ratio and uh, effective resolution. So I got there from utilities to uh, user preferences. So now I do an auto scale. Of course, I can do that from the front panel. There we go. Um, auto scaled each channel. And the other thing I want to do is I want to go to um, turn on. I want to do a. This is a differential pair. Okay. Um, so channel one is one minus three, and one is in channel three is now one plus three divided by two. I don't care about the common mode, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, so now to actually go through the Jitter Wizard, I'm going to go to the Analyze dropdown and select Measurement Analysis Easy Jit. There are two ways to, to kind of do this. Um, one is to use the Setup Wizard or um, basically turning on all measurement, uh, measure all edges essentially turns on Jitter Mode. Um, and then you want to pick a measurement and you can do Histogram, Trend, or Spectrum. I'm going to take, we're going to take a look at all these in detail. Let's just take a quick run through the wizard. The first few times through, I suggest using the wizard. Um, so basically, turn, uh, set max sample rate, always a good idea. Turn off averaging, otherwise you won't see random jitter. And uh, turn off voltage measurements to improve throughput. And we want to do another auto scale here, and it's going to, um, if you haven't already done one. Uh, next, so I need to select a measurement. So I'm going to click Add Measurement. Um, a lot of the measurements can uh, benefit from the easy jit jitter analysis stuff, but... Um, the fundamental measurement is the TIE measurement uh, for jitter, okay? Um, so for a clock, you would do clock TIE, or um, for data, you want to select data time interval error. Since I'm looking at PRBS, um, I want to, uh, so, which is a data signal, I want to look at the data TIE. And there's a lot of other measurements that can be trended and whatnot, um, and uh, NUI, UI, UI, these are period measurements, um, and they're good for finding slower types of jitter, generally speaking. But, um, so I've got data TIE so selected, and this is the fundamental jitter measurement. It's a phase measurement, and it's where an edge should have been relative to where it was actually measured against some recovered clock. And with that, we need to select clock recovery. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but um, uh, if you select constant frequency, um, this will show you basically all the jit jitter down to one over the time capture, and of course there are first order, second order, PLLs. I can even give it an explicit clock to use, and I can clean up that clock too. Um, but it's a very general comment. If you want to see all your jitter, select constant frequency. If you want to see jitter the way your receiver s sees it, set it up the way you see your receiver is going to see it. Um, so, for example, the second order PLL, right, I can, I can do that, and I can select the uh, JTF or the OJTF. The OJTF is actually what the scope and the receiver see, um, but I want to go back to uh, uh, regular constant frequency. Um, there's some advanced settings, which are, are much longer to cover. Um, we're going to use automatic threshold selection. Um, so we're going to kind of skip that. There's a lot of information there. I suggest you go into the helper, give us a ring, or send us an email. So I'm just going to hit uh, OK. So I've got my data TIE measurement on channels 1 minus 3. Um, so where the jitter measurement is actually going to be made, uh, set to 50% peak to peak. And if you, if you have this snap to zero checked, what that will do is it will um, force it to a zero threshold if the, if, the, the, if the threshold is found to be within plus or minus 10 millivolts of zero volts. Um, hysteresis basically says the signal has to go through minus 31 to zero to plus 31 millivolts. So 
If it doesn't have at least, a, in this case, a 62.36 millivolt swing, it doesn't count as an edge. Um, so next, so I can turn on a histogram, turn on a measurement trend. Uh, I can smooth the measurement trend if I want, um, and turn on a jitter spectrum. Each of these tools is for a different purpose. Okay, hit next, hit finish, and give the scope a second. And here I am making jitter measurements. Um, so I've got the histogram here. I've got the um, jitter trend here. I've got the jitter spectrum here. Um, we notice that nothing looks great, and I'm really I'm not capturing very much data. Um, it's because I, I'm only capturing a kilopoint or um, you know 25 nanoseconds of time on, on this one gigabit signal. So I'm getting maybe um, 25 UI, not a lot of data. Um, so I can just uh, put my mouse over here and capture more time. We just want to keep your eye on the sample rate, make sure it doesn't drop significantly. Um, and if you did select that, you know, you can just click here and make sure it's set to manual. Um, you can set a memory depth, and since we are doing measure all edges, it'll analyze off-screen data. Um, but I do like to do it this way, capture more data. Okay. So let's take a look at the individual options. I'm going to do a simple default setup uh, to get kind of back to where I was. And so we can take a look more easily at each option. Okay, so again, one and three. Um, do an auto scale. All right. One minus three is on. There we go. Analyze. Whoops. Easy jet. So I'm going to again do my uh, data TIE. Data. Time interval error. Um, clock recovery, constant frequency. That's great. Um, you can also filter out the TIE uh, as a high pass, band pass, low pass. Start and stop frequencies. These are brick wall frequencies. Scope goes into the frequency domain, um, uh, takes the TI data, goes to the frequency domain, chops it off, essentially. Sets it to a really low value anyway. Um, so, okay, there we go. Um, histogram. Turn on a histogram. And really, I want to do two grids, number of grids. I can just right click, do two, drag it down here. Okay, so the histogram tells us. Is is our um, basically our distribution of jitter, okay? Um, and it adds up over its, uh, every trigger event, okay? Um, we can see that there are lots of histogram statistics here um, of particular um, interest, um, at least for Gaussian histograms, is the uh, standard deviation, 1.3 or so picoseconds. This is at least with a Gaussian histogram. This is the RMS value of your jitter. Um, a lot of folks like to look at peak to peak, okay, which is given here. It's about 12 picoseconds. You got to take this number, the peak to peak, with a grain of salt, because um, it's not with respect to a BER. It's with respect to the number of acquired, uh, it's with respect to the number of measurements or your observation time. However, you want to think about that, but it's not a BER measurement. Eventually, we'll get some very large numbers. The um, histogram mode down here tells us where. Um, uh, the edges, the, the bin with the most hits in it is negative 60.4 femtoseconds. Um, the median right above there tells us, um, on average, where the edges arrived with respect to that clock on average. Um, so the, the mode is the bin with the most hits. The median is where, the, uh, where they arrived on average. Um, interestingly, the... Um, we, saw it, we see it's jumping around now to hit stop. Um, so the negative 60.4 femtoseconds means that the bin with the most hits in it means those edges are alive, arriving earlier than they should with respect to the recovered clock. And the positive 7.7 femtoseconds means that they are arriving um, uh, on average a little bit later than they should. Okay? But there's a spread. 
this 13, uh, uh, 1.3 picoseconds. Um, and so that gives us our RMS value. Okay. Now, let's go back here to analyze the jitter. And we're going to turn off the histogram and turn on the trend. Okay. Now, the trend is um, an interesting uh, tool. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to go way out in time and capture a lot more data. I'm going to drag, see if I can drag the trend down here. Okay, so the trend's up here. That's great. Um, and this is a trend of TIE versus time. It gives you a visual representation of your jitter. Um, and so you can also right-click on it and bring this up. And I like to set the offset to zero picoseconds, zero time. And we can control the scale here as well. Um, kind of drop it down. I can turn on smoothing, and sometimes this is very helpful if you, have, if you have kind of a known jitter source. So on that note, let's turn on some jitter. So let's take a fresh acquisition here, and we can see that all of a sudden, instead of a flat line, I kind of have this, this shape. Okay, so and maybe it looks like a half, a period maybe I have. Let's go back to the measurement trend. Okay. Uh, great, and let's go out in time. All right, now I'm starting to see something. Um, go back to the scale, bring it down just a little bit. There we go. Um, so what I see here is I have a sine wave. Um, so what I've got going on is my data source, I have a um, uh, periodic jitter source, um, it's phase modulation, so the TIE phase measurement is, is good here. And now what I can even do is I can drag measurements onto here. If I have enough, I'll turn that on. And just the simple drag and drop frequency measurement on here um, shows me that I've got a 50 kilohertz tone. Okay. Um, now if I go to the uh, vertical measurements, I can do a peak to peak on this. Okay. Um, and I see that it's about uh, a peak to peak of about 500 or so picoseconds. That's pretty cool. Um, and so many, many, many of the measurements can be trended. Okay? So that is the advantage. That, that's, this is what the uh, trend is used for. It helps you visualize your jitter waveform. Um, so for an SSC type signal, um, SSC is actually frequency modulation. So instead of doing a data TIE, I would actually want to do a... Um, uh, it's kind of interesting, a UI measurement for data, um, and I set it to 1, and um, for clock, I would do a frequency measurement for SSC, and then I would see the, the, the modulating SSC trend, okay, because um, SSC is not phase modulation, it's frequency modulation. Anyway, um, that's kind of a, uh, an extra point there. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, um, what this data might look like in the spectrum, in the spectral domain, the frequency domain. So going back to the analyze dropdown, measure all edges, I'm going to turn off the trend, turn on spectrum. Okay, and it actually turns on a second window here, and I'm gonna, so I'm going to turn this guy off. Okay, um, so now I've got my, the same same acquisition, and I can see that maybe there's something down here. Um, but the trend, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the spectral plot is very good for understanding multiple sources of jitter. So if you have a, if you have a 10 kilohertz jitter, um, you know, you might say, oh, that's my, uh, 10 megahertz jitter, that's my reference clock coupling in somehow. Or 32 kilohertz is another common frequency that people have to deal with. Um, so if I simply turn on Mark Peaks, Right, I can drag this peak level line up here. I'm going to change the offset so it's about here. Um, so the peak level tells me mm, 45 kilohertz, and this is an um, RMS number here uh, for the vertical. Um, and what I can also do is if I right-click here, uh, set up callouts, and turn on FFT callouts, and anything above this line, this peak line, is defined as a, uh, as a peak. All right. And you, there's a lot more flexibility there. Um, so I know that this particular tone is, is way down in uh, close. So I'm going to do a um, center of 1 megahertz. 
in a span of, say, 2 megahertz, right? and there is my jitter tone. Pretty cool. Um, so you might have multiple tones in here and so forth. You can see uh, the scope can see jitter up to half the data rate. Um, after that, it's aliased. All right? So if we let it run, it's uh, just kind of bouncing around. And if I go to a longer time scale, more time capture, whoops, wrong way, right, we notice that it sharpens up. Okay, um, and we see some uh, harmonics, harmonics left over, um, uh, possibly. Maybe that's from the channel scale. Ooh, my sample rate dropped. Bad. Let's bump that back up to 40. Things are going to slow down a bit, a little bit now. All right, so those were aliases that we saw, um, and it illustrates a good point. Keep your uh, eye on the sample rate, especially when you start to see weird things. Um, so again, we see it at, at there, um, and again, you can right-click on the um, on the spectral signal, and you can get to the scale. You can also change your uh, window type um, and your uh, linear logarithmic and so forth. Um, you can even uh, control the scope sample rate and time capture by controlling the resolution bandwidth, which we also have, which can also control here. Um, so three tools, um, histogram for showing the, um, uh, the shape, and we'll notice now that I've got this uh, slow periodic jitter on the shape has taken a significantly, uh, of the histogram is significantly different, and now, you know, this, this uh, standard deviation is maybe a little, uh, the meaning is unclear. And now that's a great lead-in um, for uh, EasyJet Plus, which can break up the different kinds of jitter and tell you about them. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you for your attention.